broken my heart so many times I stopped keeping track for a stew or something big and heavy with gravy because it's wine that can stand up to it. What's the best growing region for peat straw? Like what, which AVA is going to be found as far as producing the best peat straw? And do both of these varietals um, do the best in those same AVAs? Well, ours are grown up in Alexander Valley, so we're up a little about 15, 20 miles north of here. And we found a little hillside block that is um, literally an acre of land. It doesn't take you know, we just have a little bit of parcel, hence our very small production. And we're really happy with, you know, we talk about microclimates and you just find this little parcel of land that just happens to have all the right conditions. Um, so I guess I'm lucky that, that we've got something that works for us right, right there. Um, I think it's, you know, it tends to be, you know, again, with Syrah, Syrah can go in a bunch of different styles. You look at yeah. some of the places where it is in Australia, and they go for that really warm weather, mm. hot, baked out kind of environment. You can go to Northern Rhone, and it's a very cool climate, completely different kinds of conditions. So Syrah is one of those grapes, I think, that really can span a whole bunch of different ranges. And stylistically, you'll find a very different wine based on where it's grown. But it can make beautiful wines <coughs> in a whole bunch of different environments. Yeah, I noticed um, we have an area down southern part of Sonoma County called the Petaluma Gap. And in the Petaluma Gap, um, there's a lot of plantings of Syrah, and they're really wonderful wines. But they are distinctly different than Dry Creek or Alexander Valley. So my guests that are, that are uh, not familiar of where we are, we are about 55 miles north of the San Francisco Golden Gate, where the Giants won today. I'll just tell you again. Okay. <laughs> in case you didn't know, didn't see the hat. Okay. Or didn't see the game. Maybe you don't have a TV, but, you know, you got video. So um, the, the Dry Creek region is about 15 miles to the north and then a little west, where Alexander Valley is about the same distance north, but a little more to the east. Correct. And uh, both extremely hot. So when the fog rolls in this region here, which is kind of close to, we're kind of in between Russian River and, and Sonoma Coast here, kind of in the, in the middle. But the fog will roll in here early in the afternoon, you know, three, four, five o'clock, where Dry Creek and Alexander Valley, much, much later in, in rolling in, it really sees the sun for the bulk of the day. And then early in the morning, that, that, that fog is gone in that region. And then it still lingers here. That's why you see in Russian River and Sonoma Coast, for the most part, your Pinot Noirs. You're going to see your white wines, your Sauvignon Blancs and Chardonnays and, and Rieslings and, and those wines. So uh, a little warmer climate. The other thing that you'll notice that we really find with the Alexander Valley wines, and we have an advantage when you come into cellars of Sonoma, because we have so many different wines, I mean, we're up to almost 60 different wines that we have in the tasting room. It's wonderful to taste side by side a few Alexander Valley wines because you get a unique characteristic that we notice is that nice soft finish in all the wines you see from Alexander Valley. So here's a Petit Syrah, big mouthfeel. Um, just take a just smell how wonderful that wine is. Almost inky in the glass. I mean, if, if you get a shot of that.